Gracie. I'm finally here with chapter six, and Teddy's gonna read with me. Just so you know, he's gotten a little bit naughty. So there might be some biting going on. Let's see if we can do this together. Okay, so chapter six, the date on this one, Monday, October 2nd, and the character is Petra. <clears throat> so it says, sitting in language arts on a Monday morning, Petra Wilde wondered if a person could die of boredom. If so, she was in trouble because everything in the world bored her. Everything about everyone she knew bored her. She bored herself. This book they were reading, Wonder, Boring. Petra knew how it was gonna turn out the minute she started. By the end of the book, everyone would love the kid with the strange face. He was smart and funny and kind, and the kids who first didn't want to be his friend because of his face would slowly change their minds as they got to know him. Petra didn't know why she bothered finishing the book. Now, if the author had wanted to make the book interesting, she would have made Augie not the great, that great on the inside. She would have made him really sarcastic because that was how he protected himself from all the mean things people said. If Petra had had a disability that made people made fun of, that was how she'd be. She'd make people scared to even look at her. Of course, a lot of people were already scared to look at Petra. Or maybe they looked at her, but they were afraid to talk to her. You look mean when you're just sitting there, Rosie had told her at the pool one day last summer. Are you trying to look mean? Petra had shrugged. I'm not trying to do anything. I just look the way I look. Well, you're just lucky you're so pretty, Rosie had said quickly, which was typical Rosie. She liked to criticize and then pretend she hadn't. Or dress up her criticism so it seemed like she was worried about you. Oh, you look so pale today. Are you sick? Or maybe it's the color of your shirt. It sort of washes you out. Are you sure you're not sick? Did Ben McPherson think she looked mean? Talking to him at Lila's party Saturday was the closest thing to an interesting conversation Petra had had in ages. He looked shocked when she'd started talking about Chinese dynasties, like he couldn't believe someone like her was smart. She wondered what else they might have talked about if he hadn't been as usual Ben McPherson geeky self and clammed up. Petra had all sorts of topics she'd like to discuss. Her mom was currently obsessed with climate change. Did Ben think global warming was for real? If he could travel anywhere, where would he go? Petra thought she might like to go to Africa. Ben was half African American. Had he ever wanted to go to Africa? Petra wished for the millionth time that she was in a school where there were at least three people worth talking to. Was that so much to ask for? Last spring, she'd applied to the Lakewood Friends School, the only private school her parents could afford and had been put on a waiting list. Friends School had amazing classes like Spanish, through Spanish speaking artists and mythic worlds stories and wisdom from past cultures. If she'd gotten in, Petra had planned on cutting her hair super short and wearing glasses with clear lenses. Her new friends would tell her amazing things that she didn't already know. Looking around the classroom, Petra wondered if there was one truly interesting person here. Carson Bennett was bent over his spelling workbook, chewing on a pencil. Carson was cute and he could be funny, but interesting, doubtful. She wondered if he realized Cammy Lovett was staring at him from across the room, her eyes all dreamy. He's out of your league, Cammy. Petra wanted to call over to her, but Cammy, while no Ben McPherson, wasn't stupid. Maybe not interesting, but definitely not dumb. She had to know that a boy like Carson would never go for her. Rogan was pretty smart and possibly interesting, but you'd probably have to dig pretty deep to get to the interesting parts. Cole Perrin didn't do anything but draw all the time, an unusual combo of interesting and totally boring, which wasn't the combination Petra was looking for. That kid Sam, the one who moved a few weeks ago, might have had some hidden depths now that Petra thought about it. Like new girl Ellie, he was big on taking notes. He seemed like he might have secrets. Secrets could make a person interesting, as long as they weren't the sad sort of secrets that made you want to pretend you'd never heard them. Speaking of Ellie the new girl, what was her story? And why did Petra still think of Ellie as the new girl, but not Lila, who was new too? But Lila didn't seem new. It was like there'd been a spot just waiting for Lila to fill. But 
The same wasn't true for Ellie. No one had put out a sign saying, wanted for sixth grade girl with fountain pen and uncontrollable curly hair who tries to sneak read books in her lap during science and math periods. Nobody had put in a request for a girl who was either really quiet or sort of braggy about all the places she'd lived. Hey, Ellie Barker was probably an interesting person. Daddy, no bite, Petra had to admit, but she was giving up on geeks after the Ben McPherson fail. So that meant Stephen and Bart were out too. As for Becca Hobbs, Petra looked around the room to see what Becca was doing right this minute. She'd be done with the spelling assignment, which meant she was probably dusting the books in the reading corner or watering Mrs. Herrera's plants on the windowsill next to her desk. Yep, there she was, standing by the teacher's desk, per usual. But wait a minute. Petra leaned forward, trying to get a better look. Mrs. Herrera was at the editor's round table with Elizabeth Hernandez, her back to her desk. And Becca seemed to be pouring something from a baggie into Mrs. Herrera's top desk drawer while nervously peeking around to see if anyone was looking. What was she pouring? Sugar? Petra sat back, trying to appear like she wasn't watching. Now Becca slipped something out of her pocket, a little white jewelry box, and opened the lid. She turned the box upside down and tapped on it like she was trying to get its contents to fall into the drawer. Then she tucked the box back into her pocket and pushed the drawer closed. Becca, can I help you with something? Mrs. Herrera called from the editor's round table. What are you looking for? I was checking to see if you had any spelling tests you needed me to grade, Becca replied. Totally unconvincing in Petra's opinion, but Mrs. Herrera seemed to buy her lame explanation. I'll let you know if I need help, thanks, Mrs. Herrera said. Why don't you find something to read if you're done with your assignment? Can I go to the library, Becca asked. I finished Wonder. Mrs. Herrera nodded. Yes, but be back in 10 minutes, please. Petra raised her hand. Can I go? I'm done too, and I need a new book. Of course, Mrs. Herrera said. Ask Mrs. Rosen for something challenging. I want you to push yourself a little harder, Petra. That was the interesting thing about Mrs. Herrera, who was possibly the only interesting non-geek person other than Petra in that classroom. She seemed to think Petra was smart which Petra was, but she liked to hide it whenever possible. I like your shirt, Becca said as they walked out into the hallway. What would you call that color? Periwinkle? I call it blue, Petra informed her. So what are you putting in Mrs. Herrera's drawer? Becca went pale. Um, what? I wasn't putting anything in her drawer. I was looking for spelling tests to grade. Mrs. Herrera lets me grade our practice tests sometimes. Petra rolled her eyes. What a simpleton. We got our practice test back Friday afternoon, remember? Besides, I saw you pouring something. Was it sugar? And what was in the box? Becca's hands started to tremble and Petra decided to try a different approach. Come on, Becca. Everybody knows you're Mrs. H's favorite. You guys probably play practical jokes on each other all the time. That's what friends do, right? Play practical jokes, have fun. To Petra's surprise, Becca's expression turned angry. I'm definitely not her favorite. I'm more like her unfavorite. Teddy, what are you doing? Interesting. So Mrs. Herrera hadn't fallen for Becca's brown nosing routine. Every year, Becca Hobbs was held up by teachers as this kind of saint. But any kid or any adult who couldn't be bought with a few cookies and a dozen compliments a day could see right through her. Petra should have known that Mrs. Herrera was the sort of teacher who wouldn't be impressed by Becca's campaign to be a teacher's pet. Sounds like she did something to make you mad, Petra said. Sounds like maybe you're trying to get back at her. She moved in closer, put her hand on Becca's shoulder. You can tell me. Everyone thinks Mrs. Herrera is so great, but I guess she's not fooling either of us. Becca shook her head. No way, she's an awful person. She really is, Petra said in a soothing voice. So what'd you do? Becca looked to her left and to her right, making sure no one else was around. She leaned toward Petra and whispered, I poured sugar in her drawer, and then I dumped some ants from our yard in there. I'm hoping they'll decide her drawer is a great place to live and call all their friends. Or wander around and leave, having no idea where they are, Petra thought. What an idiot. 
Don't you think that's a great idea, Becca giggled, sounded worried at the same time. Don't you think that will drive her crazy? I think you're brilliant, Petra said. Actually, that was the opposite of what she thought, but who cared? Because even if Becca was incredibly dumb for someone who got straight A's, and even if she wasn't interesting as a person, she might possibly be interesting as a project. Could Petra transform Miss Goody Two-Shoes of the sixth grade into an 11-year-old juvenile delinquent? Yes, Petra thought. Ow. She believed she could. Maybe she could convince Becca to steal one of Mrs. Herrera's special things to, from her special collection. If Becca was so down on the teacher, it might be easy to convince her the best revenge would be to nab those fancy little sugar cubes. Talk about your aunt bait. You don't want to eat lunch with me tomorrow, do you, Petra said, because I'd really like to get your advice on something. Becca's eyes widened until Petra thought they were going to pop out of her head. I'd, I'd love to. Great, Petra said. Now I guess we better go check out some books unless you want to do something else instead. They were standing outside the art room. The door was wide open, but the room was empty and Petra made a quick inventory of ways to send Becca over to the dark side. Splash paint on the artwork hanging on the walls. Write mean things on the whiteboard about Mrs. Lamprey, the art teacher. Take Mrs. Lamprey's scissors, the fancy ones that only the teacher was allowed to use, and cut up, what, what could they cut up? Petra looked at Becca, who was staring at her wide-eyed, her expression full of expectation. Becca's hair, which was pretty, Petra had to admit, was pulled back in a long ponytail. You've got great hair, she said, and Becca's cheeks flushed red. Have you ever thought about cutting it? I could definitely see you with a shorter cut, something kind of punky and rebellious. Becca looked uncertain, but Petra took her by the hand and pulled her into the art room. You need to show people you're not the Becca Hobbs you used to be. You don't care what other people think, especially not Mrs. Herrera. She needs to know she's dealing with a new you. The scissors were on Mrs. Lamprey's desk, the sharp blades gleaming. Petra smiled. Oh, this was going to be an interesting project, all right. As interesting as she could possibly make it. Ooh, that's the best chapter yet, isn't it? That's a good one. All right, so that's the end of this chapter. I'll record another one um, in a couple of days, and I hope you enjoyed it.